No, I can record it, all good. It'd be happening. Cool. <laughs> Everyone should have got a little, oh, this is being recorded. Okay. So I wanted to just first introduce Queer Disrupt and switch off my phone from making noise. <laughs> I want to first introduce Queer Disrupt and let you know a little bit about who we are. So Queer Disrupt is an organisation that's run entirely by volunteers and we formally began in June 2020 during the early stages of the pandemic. We existed a little bit before this time as a small group based at the University of Warwick and we were called Queer History Warwick. Um, we ran kind of in-person events and published a few blog posts and when the pandemic hit, unfortunately, we lost our institutional support and the little bit of funding that we did have. We'd been wanting to branch out for a little while as we felt being kind of this solely academic group constrained the possibilities of our queer existences. And so we kind of took this loss as a fresh start, a kind of new beginning as Queer Disrupt. Um, so our official relaunch took place at the end of September 2020 and ever since then we uh, kind of aimed to provide a space that gives access to vital knowledge on queer topics. Um, we want to kind of uplift queer voices that don't often get the chance to be heard and this is something we strive for in everything we do. You know, many of the people today, um, it's their first time ever presenting at a conference at all. So it will be really exciting for them, hopefully. Um, we feel that kind of this queer knowledge has been neglected in broader public conversation often. There's a lot of complaints lodged at queer theory as being very inaccessible. So we came to like a little bit bridge that gap and bring some of this knowledge to um, a public space. Um, and so we aim to do that with all our kind of events, podcasts, blog posts, and also with this conference. Um, and we want to kind of provide access to this queer knowledge in the most accessible, supportive, and interesting way that we can. We've previously had events with early career scholars, such as, you know, Kate Davidson, Carly Pendleton, and Kit Hyam. We've also had events with activists, such as our Defiance event, and the event with Susan Stryker. Well, now we're at kind of in more comfortable with this online format. We've started branching out a little bit. And we recently had um, an event with a performance artist, Miguel Zinta Solis. Um, and that was really, really incredible. If you haven't seen it, I recommend checking it out. It's about um, the history of queer bikers. Um, so as well as these uh, events, we also, like I just said, work on podcasts, blog posts, and we also work on things like archival projects. So. Recently, we did a Queer in the Quarantine project, which was an attempt to capture artistic expression of queerness in lockdown. You'll be able to see this when we publish the project's webpage at the beginning of July, and we'll be posting a little bit after that. We've also worked with several incredible groups um, and organizations throughout this past year, such as the House of Rainbow, the Herbert Museum and Art Gallery, the Modern Records Centre and the Centre for the Study of Women and Gender, Coventry Pride and much more. We work with lots and lots of people. We also, you know, hope to continue working with people in the future. Um, but all of this that I've just mentioned couldn't have taken a place without our team members, both current and previous. So our team has actually been the backbone of everything Queer Disrupt do, and they generously kind of offer their time freely so that we can bring content like this conference to you. Everybody in the, the team is a volunteer, um, including me and Nick. So our team over the past year have also um, achieved incredible things in their own time that's been supported by Queer Disrupt work. You know, there's been drag content produced, queer and trans inclusive teaching support, We've built international connections, as you can see from this conference today, we've published work, so on and so forth. Um, for myself and Nick, I just wanted to thank all of the team by name, so you can hear the names, know them. Um, this includes Sayantan Data, Melissa Martin, Sam Park, Adebayo Quadri and Kemby, uh, James Whitfield, Jazz Brogdon, Locke Coldrick, Simona Pexerg, Dylan Stebbing Boulay. Phoenix Wilkes and Andrea Zuliani. Um, all of this could not have been made possible. Sorry, Andrea's in the room socially distanced from us and looked up like, oh. <laughs> all of this has been made possible also with the support of everybody here today, everybody who supported us in the past. A big, big thank you to everybody who signed up. We had to double our tickets. We were absolutely overwhelmed with the support. 
Um, after the conference, the team's going to be taking a small break, but we really recommend you follow us on social media um, if you don't already, as we're going to be having a kind of queer retrospective campaign. And this will showcase all of our content from the past year, everything. We're going to post it all out there again. So now I'm going to introduce the team. I'm going to introduce the content. Um, this conference kind of aims to look at where queer is now and what the possible future of queer will be. In the late 1980s, queer kind of had its own multitude of aims and meanings, often feeling very fluid in nature. I won't name anything specifically here because I don't want to pin down a specific meaning. Um, I'm hoping uh, some of our speakers today and tomorrow will give you some of that context, give you some of that backbone. But we feel that now with LGBTQ plus rights being afforded to many across the globe, obviously not everybody, and queer being kind of more incorporated into academic departments, particularly in the UK and USA, queer has taken on this new form. There's many conversations taking place online in ways that often don't feel constructive to us um, about this mainstreaming of queerness, queer identities, bodies and lives. So we wanted to use this conference as a chance to tackle some of these questions head on. You know, what does it mean to be queer now? Who are these online conversations serving? Has there been an attempt to universalize a queer identity? How and why is queerness co-opted and mainstreamed? What possibilities have opened up for us? What limitations do we now have? All these kind of questions. There's many, many more questions that we could ask. Um, but the conference has been organized around six themes. We have memories, languages, institutions, sex, media, and spaces. Each panel has a variety of speakers who are all going to bring their own experiences, identities, interests, and knowledge to tackle this mainstreaming of queerness in their own way. If you haven't checked them out already, there's a booklet available on the webpage with all the panelists' details, including full biographies and abstracts. We also have um, Jack Halberstam and Heather Love, two very well-known academics in the world of queer theory, who are going to offer us a, their kind of own interpretations on queerness today. If you haven't heard of them, their biographies and abstracts or uh, abstracts, their biographies are in the um, aforementioned booklet. <laughs> I forgot the word. So today we have the following event. At 9.30 a.m., and we are talking British summertime here, or BST, uh, we're going to be starting with the Queer Memories panel uh, before moving on to a lunch break. From 12.30 p.m., we're going to be running the Queer Languages panel before taking another short break at 2.30 p.m. From 3 to 4, you'll be able to see Jack Halberstam give a talk on anesthetics of collapse, and I personally am very, very excited for that one. And we'll also be taking another short break and have our last panel of the day at 4.15 p.m., um, which will be the Queering Institutions panel. And that will be followed by a short sign off from Nick. <laughs> if you need a refresher on timings or you want to see more information on the panelists again, you can find everything on our website. Uh, I believe Nick is dropping the link in the chat, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, you should have also received all the webinar links you need as we have separate links for each panel. So please ensure you're joining the right session. Um, if you need to get in touch with us at any point during the conference, please email hello at queerdisrupt.com as we'll be monitoring that inbox all day. In the breaks, we actually chose not to organize any breakout rooms as we know there's a lot going on today and we wanted to give people the chance to step away without feeling like they were missing something. So um, for those that would still want to engage with the conference material, um, we have that conference attendee page that Nick just dropped the link for, um, which also has content for you to check out. We really hope you drop a message on the Padlet, add a pin to the map, um, and we also, you know, we want to hear as much about everybody attending as possible. We, we, it, there's already so much on there. Um, it's really nice, like, seeing what everybody's doing and why they're interested. There's also fun things like the Spotify playlist that you just heard at the beginning. And we also have a reading list that is full of recommendations from all of our speakers. Um, the Spotify playlist was also recommendations from our speakers. So in terms of the format of the panels. Hang on, let me take a drink. Give them a breather. <laughs> mm. 
So in terms of the format of the panels, each panel is going to be approximately two hours long. The um, one, the very last panel is a little bit shorter because there's less speakers. Um, but every other panel should be approximately two hours long, and this will include 30 minutes for a Q&A. On our web page, we also have the <coughs> online leaflet, um, which Nick's just linked the web page. Um, and that provides more information on how the Q&A system works on the webinar. But in the next session, you're going to see a button at the bottom that says Q&A. It's not available in this session, so I can't um, show you what it looks like, but you'll see it in the next one. Um, and you'll be able to ask your questions there. We ask that you um, don't put the questions in the chat as we're not going to be looking for them there. We're only going to be looking at this Q&A box. In this Q&A um, system, there's also a little thumbs up system. So all attendees will be able to vote for their favorite questions. And um, we'll be also prioritizing questions that address all of the speakers rather than individuals. Speakers can actually reply through text though, so they can um, message while somebody else is speaking and they're free to do so if they wish, but they don't have to. Um, and there's unfortunately no way to get through all of the questions. And so we apologize in advance if your question is not answered. So um, we also are going to get a little bit more serious here. We want to really ensure the best possible environment for the attendees, speakers and the Queer Disrupt team. And so we want to take a moment to state that whilst this is an inclusive space, it is far from neutral. We employ a good faith policy with all of our events as we understand that our audience comes from a variety of different backgrounds. This good faith policy means that we take all comments and actions as constructive rather than destructive and in service of generating a productive conversation around queer topics. We hope that all our attendees kind of come willing to listen and learn. But we do have a few guidelines in place that I just want to reiterate here. They, were, they are also available in that online leaflet. We ask that you please leave all your isms and phobias at the door um, and out of this space this virtual space. That means that um, we're not going to accept racism, ableism, sexism, transphobia, homophobia, or any other forms of discrimination. When individuals are discussing their own personal experiences relating to their identities, please remain respectful, even though their experiences may differ from your own. Please pay attention to people's pronouns. These are likely to be next to their name on the Zoom chat. You can see it on mine and Nick's. Um, but if they're not, or if you're unsure, please stick with the neutral they, them, theirs. And uh, we want you to, we want to ensure that you remain kind of constructive when asking questions and engaging with the speakers. This means that you keep your comments directed towards their work rather than them as an individual. And this also means that you should not be deliberately trying to provoke speakers or attendees in order to get a reaction. But I trust you all here, I'm sure you'll be okay. Um, we do have the team available throughout today and tomorrow that will be moderating the event and they will be taking appropriate action if you're not acting in good faith. Um, that may include removal from the conference. If you're removed from the conference, you won't be able to get back in, unfortunately. But now I'm done being super, super serious. I wanted to finally add a little comment about social media. Um, we really encourage you to post about us, engage with us online. We really love seeing everything you have to say, but we would ask that you don't photograph kind of the webinar space or post quotes without express permission from the speakers. What we would encourage you to do instead is to make use of the hashtag QD conference and the gifts that we um, created for today. These are also available on that web page. The conference attendee that uses the gifts and hashtags in the most interesting, funny, or happiest way will be keeping track of them today and tomorrow. Um, we're going to reach out to you and uh, you can receive, you know, you're in for a chance to receive a queer disrupt goodie bag from the team. We have a, a newly arrived merch bag, which include little badges and stuff like this. Um, so we have a few to send, so please post to your heart's content. We want to hear what you have to say. Um, so we're going to get let you go a little bit early in this introduction to give you time to explore the web page if you haven't already and to give us time to set up this first panel. We're going to drop the link in the chat to the first um, webinar, hopefully. I've got links on it. That sounds surprised. <laughs> You're super like ready. <laughs> so you don't have to go searching for it. It's all there. And we look forward to seeing you there. Is there anything you want to say before we go? No, I think you said it all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, 
go, everybody, and I will see you at the <clears throat> first panel. You will be hosted by James and Adebayo. I will see you there. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.